Welcome back, preppers. Today we'll be starting part three of our full samurai build. Today's project will be the Do, which is the chest and back plate to the armor. Using our new mannequin, I'll start off by creating a paper template. The Do is among the most important parts of the armor, since it protects most of the vital organs. The Do was traditionally made of leather covered with lacquer for waterproofing. It may have also been laid with metal scales for extra protection. This one will be made from 10 mm EVA foam, not recommended for battle. After creating a rough template of the chest plate, I found that one side was perfect, so I decided to cut it in half and utilize the perfect side to replicate the rest of the vest. After cutting out the first half of the vest, I flipped the template over to create a mirror image for the other half. The two halves were tacked together with blue tape. The tape was used on the inside seam to create a more secure bond. Before just creating a mirror image of this template for the back plate, I wanted to get a test fit. After confirming all the measurements, I went ahead and cut out both the chest and back plate out of 10 mm EVA foam. To get a better curvature around the body, darts were cut out under the arm slots. Since I'll be using my very special SKS high density foam, I'm setting up my cuts to get the most efficient use of the product. Speaking of SKS props, Steve K has just completed his Kabuto build, the Samurai Helmet. I'm in the middle of that build now, so you have to subscribe to the channel, press that bell notification, so you'll be ready when that video is uploaded. To cut through the 10mm EVA foam, I'll be using my utility knife. I do just a bit of hand forming for the horizontal body curvature. Under the guidelines of measure twice and cut once, I do one more test fit before creating the back plate. One of the reasons for this test fit is to see how the darts line up. After the plate is wrapped around the body, the darts line up perfectly. I move ahead and cut out the back plate out of the same 10mm EVA foam. The template is flipped over for this cut, so we can get that same mirror image of the front plate for the back plate. Once again, planning the cut to get the most usage out of our HD foam.
the large scrap pieces will be squirreled away for other projects. Before the final test fit, a bit more hand roll forming. After setting our buddy aside, we get started with the rest of the dough assembly. The darts are closed up using contact cement. The seams are then sanded down and smoothened out with my Dremel rotary tool. The edges of the entire project are also sand and smooth with the Dremel rotary tool. A coat of black Plassey dip is applied to the entire project, then a coat of red oxide, and then finally a coat of Cabernet red. Weights are used to hold down the extreme curvature while the paint dried. After that, they were used to lock in the body curvature. A quarter inch border was marked out for the perimeter edging. For the edging, I'll be using some Benecrete three millimeter thick beige self-adhesive EVA foam. This product comes in many colors and it'll save me a lot of time and energy because there'll be no need for painting. This roll that I purchased is approximately 79 by 12 inches and I'll be cutting a quarter inch strip down the entire length. I carefully attached the edging so I wouldn't have to disturb the adhesive by removing and replacing. It's very important not to create any undue stress by stretching out the material while applying it. Since it is a foam material, it takes the corner turns very well.
When connecting two pieces, I recommend you use a little bit of instant glue. The same procedure is used to apply the horizontal strips. Although I marked out the lines for the horizontal strips in advance, I found that the best leveling tool was your line of sight. That same process is used on the back plate. I created a small template to mark out the lacing holes. The pattern for the entire chest and back plate will be X patterns with two X's on each of the top side panels and three rows going down. I'm using a large needle to mark out the holes. This is a tedious process, but the more patience you have, the better the project will look. I use my USB soldering iron to burn through the pre-marked holes. Let me speed this up a little for you. The lacing procedure is the same one that I used for the mempo. I doubled up my faux leather strips, then burned the edges down to a point. The strips were fished through each side of the top two holes. The crossing pattern was made before going into the bottom two holes. The strips were brought straight down to the next two holes and the pattern was repeated. Since the strips are flat, it took a little work to keep them that way and not get them twisted. Round strings were used for the mempo, so this wasn't an issue. The burned holes were a little tight, so I had to utilize my needle to help push the string through. But later on, I decided to just drill through the holes and make them a little wider. Even knowing this in advance, in the second part of this build, I still had to go through the same process of utilizing the stick fin first, then my USB soldering iron, then the drill. I found that you had to go through all three processes to get a clean and accurately placed hole.
After completing one line of stitching, I shifted over to the next line and started the process back going in the opposite direction. Using the same transitional procedure for the last line of stitching. After both plates were completed, they were mounted back on a mannequin to get the proper measurement and location of the straps. Paper templates were made to create four pieces of 4mm EVA foam. These pieces of foam are going to be used to sandwich in the structural strapping. They are basically only for aesthetical purposes. The 4mm strips are spray painted with red oxide and cabernet red paint. The first section of the 4mm foam will be the outer layer. It will connect both plates with just a quarter inch overlay. This will be applied on both sides of the chest and back plates. The main structural strapping will be two strips of one inch elastic bands that will be attached to both sides with instant glue. Using contact cement, the bands will be sandwiched in with the inner layer of EVA foam. The edges were then marked out, trimmed, sanded, and painted. The last sort of business for this project is to create the side strapping. I thought of a dozen ways to do this, but settled in on the buckle and velcro strips. On the chest plate, four strips were glued to the sides with the buckle exposed.
The buckles were placed symmetrically as possible. The corresponding positions of the buckles on the front plate were marked out on the back plate. The same straps were used in inverse. On the back plate, the buckles were glued down to the surface and the Velcro straps left exposed. For extra security as well as aesthetics, strips of pre-painted 4mm foam were glued down to the top of the straps. Contact cement was applied to the outer edging of the strapping. Instant glue was applied directly to the top of the straps. That same process was repeated on the straps of the chest plate. With the dough completed, it'll take its position on a mannequin. A black long sleeve shirt will be used for the lining. When I came home, there was a man in my house. I fought with this man. Whatever. He had a mechanical arm. Well, it can't be our guy, Richard. This guy has two fake arms. See? With the Velcro straps, we have quick and easy attachment and removal. I placed my straps in short for a very tight fitting on this particular mannequin. If I were making it for cosplay, I would have left the straps a lot longer. This marks the end of part 3 of our full samurai build. Part 4 will be the kabuko, or samurai helmet. I'm in the middle of that project right now. So be sure to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, press the like button, 
as well as that bell notification so you know when these videos are uploaded.